Hi guys! So I just want to go ahead and do a quick update really quick. Um, I know if you guys watch our vlogs then you probably know the gist of what's going on, but I wanted to do a formal sit down video and just tell you more so what's going on. If you hear talking or whatever, I have to distract Keegan with uh, YouTube for right now. Um, Hunter's at school and the baby's sleeping so I'm going to do this update really quick before he wakes up and then hopefully when he wakes up I can do his six month update. So. Anyways, um, if you guys are new to my channel, then you uh, don't know that we had a miscarriage. We uh, found out we were pregnant on May 13th, um, May 13th, and so um, I had um, have some, had some spotting early on. Went to the ER, had low HCG levels. Um, they told me that most likely it wasn't going to work, but the levels kept going up and doubling. Then I went to my doctor's office, and, or not my doctor, I didn't get to see my doctor because she was on vacation this whole time. So then I went to the other doctor in her practice and he told me basically I was going to miscarry, um, but if the levels had risen uh, so many points, it had to be like by 350 or whatever. And so I got hope again. It was 465 or something like that. You can go ahead and look at those videos before. Anyways, it got into the 400s and so that was really good, I thought. Well, turns out that it wasn't good. I ended up having to go to the ER um, on the 26th of May and um, I, they told me that it was a blighted ovum. Every time that they did an ultrasound, they saw a sac, but they never saw anything inside the sac. So they always just called it a blighted ovum. And so flash forward, I saw my doctor, and sure enough, my by the time I saw my doctor, after we came back from Colorado, I had already miscarried, or what I thought I had miscarried. And my doctor, that Monday when we came back, had told me that I had had a complete miscarriage, and so no other stuff was needed, and my level was already down to like 227, so that was great. Now fast forward, and I've been taking tests every day just to kind of what they call like um, test out, and so to make sure my levels are going down. And my levels were never going down. Um, they started going down a little bit, but then they just kept getting darker. And a lot of you think, well, maybe you're pregnant again. No, I wasn't, I really wasn't, so. I thought that was weird, and I was having a lot of left-sided ovary pain. And so I um, I told her, and she's like, okay, let's get your levels checked. So we got our levels checked, and in almost 10 days, my levels had only dropped three points. So that wasn't normal, um, especially after she said I already had a complete miscarriage. So um, I ended up having to come back in, and they Oh, no, then I end up going to the ER because she said, if you're having any pain, Shaw, I don't think you can wait to see me on Thursday, which they were going to schedule my pre-op for my DNC. Shall just go to the ER. So I went to the ER, and my levels dropped a little bit more, 216, but nothing like they were hoping. They did another ultrasound, and they saw I had like three uh, cysts in my right ovary. I had a mass in my left ovary and still a corpus luteum which is still probably producing HCG as well as um, what they call um, what is it? It's uh, products of conception. I think that's what they call it. Um, so that was still in there. So um, they thought maybe I had an infection in my uterus and so they gave me antibi or antibiotics and those antibiotics made me so sick. They gave me doxycycline I think that's what it's called. Um, do not. <laughs> if you have to get that, I'm sorry, but that made me so sick, you guys. So the next day I went to, oh, two days later, I went to um, my pre-op appointment and she just let me know that um, we were going to do a DNC. I was going to have to be put under and if they could not find what they were looking for, then they were going to give me a shot of methotrexate because they still had not ruled out an atopic pregnancy. Flash forward to the day of the surgery. Um, I could not eat after midnight and I had to be at the doctor's office or I had to be at the hospital at 11.30. So um, luckily Tav's mom was off that day and she took the boys down to Merced um, to hang out with her cousin and everything. And so we just kind of got to go to the surgery. Um, they checked me in. Um, we had to wait for a while because we got there kind of early. We got there before 11. So we had to wait until they were ready for us. They took us up into a room. Um, I got undressed. 
they come in, came into the IV, which the IV took forever because they don't let you drink anything or eat anything. So I was super dehydrated and I already have a hard time with them poking my veins like when I'm not dehydrated. And so they usually have to get them in my hands. That's the only place that they can usually ever get me like an IV. And they were having a hard time getting it in my hand. Anyways, I had like developed like a bruise over here because like a pocket of um, fluid was collecting. It wasn't like infiltrated. I don't know what was going on. So they were kind of confused too. So anyways, um, so I got dressed. Um, they did all that. They came and talked to me. And then... Um, I was just waiting basically and my surgery was scheduled for 1 30 but unfortunately her her um, two surgeries before mine ran over so I didn't end up getting surgery until almost four o'clock in the afternoon so I did not eat until way later like I didn't eat till like seven o'clock but anyways um, they finally came in and talked to me the um, the nurse just, oh, the doctor came in and she told me what was going on. Same thing. Do we have any questions? No, of course not. We already know what's going on. The anesthesiologist came in and he just told me, oh, thank you. Uh, and he just told me, uh, all, you know, basically all the things. I need to sign some paperwork. Um, asked me if I had any problem with anesthesia. Anesthe anesthesia. And he, it was funny because he was like trying to make light of the situation. He's all, <laughs> sorry. He's all, um he's all you might feel some pain he's all but don't worry we have plenty of pain medication so and you know what's funny is they had to use all of it so he said some people feel n like no pain some people feel a lot of pain um and of course um the ob nurse or the ob not ob <laughs> the uh, or nurse came in and talked to me a little bit and they wheeled me off and I got to say bye to Tav and then they took me into surgery room it was like the most like coldest like scary room ever it felt like I was like in the morgue but anyways um, they put the bed next to the bed that's in there and they asked me to hop over and then they laid out my arms on these things and before I even knew it the doctor or the anesthesiologist he came and told me he's like Oh, I gave you something in your uh, in your um, IV to help you just relax a little bit. He's all, I'll let you know when I give you the medication to put you to sleep, and I'll count backwards, and we'll go from there. Well, I don't remember anything after he gave me the medicine to not care, <laughs> because I must have fell asleep or something. I was so tired. I don't know, but uh, I don't remember falling asleep. Um, and apparently, it took a little while. I think it took like 30 minutes or so. And all of a sudden I remember waking up when they were wheeling me through a hallway to go to like the recovery room and I was in a ton of pain. I was having so much left sided pain. Um, and the doctor finally came back and she said that uh, they couldn't find what they were looking for. Um, so they, um, so basically it's a tubal pregnancy. And so they gave me the shot of methotrexate that made me feel so sick. So I seriously had like, um, I think it's, is it chirp? I don't know, something with a T. It's allotted, Norco. They gave me tons of medicine. I was in so much pain. My left ovary felt like it was bursting. And um, they gave me the methotrexate. Of course it wasn't bursting, you guys. It really wasn't bursting. Um, the mass that they found in my ovary was so, like, was small that they weren't worried about having to have surgery to take it out so the methotrexate would dissolve it um and so after that they finally were like we have no more pain medicine that we can give you um you know we kind of got to just take you to the recovery or like the room you can stay there for 30 minutes you need to eat something and then you can leave so i tried to hurry and eat i was so so out of it you guys so out of it um i showed you guys footage and you could tell i was just out of it for the whole day the next couple days I was just having a lot of pain um, in my stomach. It was just more so not towards the DNC, it was the methotrexate that was killing me, you guys. My stomach was seriously in knots and it was hurting so bad and they said that that was common and I still felt so tired and just out of it and I was in so much pain. And um, it's taken up to, today is Thursday, to finally feel like better um the biggest biggest uh symptom or 
what's it called like a biggest side effect that I had besides the stomach pain was um, I had the hardest stools ever like I am so constipated that I was having these like ball sizes this big these black balls coming out it sounds so disgusting you guys but it is the worst pain like I was seriously sitting on the toilet feeling like I was giving birth it was so bad um, and that was all the way up until yesterday I haven't had any more I've been trying to drink more water so we'll see how that goes. On Monday, when I did go get my blood drawn, my levels had dropped to 14. So from 216, they dropped to 14 in three days. So that's really good. So obviously the methotrexate really worked for me. Um, so yeah, um, right now I am just waiting to either ovulate or get my period back. Um, I haven't, um, I didn't even bleed until Tuesday. I didn't have any bleeding, like, like heavy bleeding like it honestly felt like on Tuesday I was getting my period like I remember telling Tavish like I feel like I'm gonna start my period but obviously I'm not going to you know what I mean so I go Friday to get my blood drawn again and hopefully the levels are at zero I got my first negative test yesterday um, at a, on a home pregnancy test but I know they don't consider it negative unless it's under five at the doctor so I will go ahead and do that on Friday and I will update you guys again if you have any questions about um, my DNC, what we're going through, miscarriage, whatever, go ahead and leave it down below. Go ahead and share your stories down below. You know, I love answering you guys and I love just, you know, that whole community down there. But anyways, uh, if you want to see updates uh, sooner, go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. I updated all of those first, and those are all at Felicia Nicole. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. We post videos every single day, and we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye, guys.